This prepping channel is pretty extreme. I don't just talk about the need for preparing for nuclear emergencies. I actually built an entire fallout shelter. But that's not enough. That it's not nearly enough. And in this video, what we're talking about is what happens next. What's the next project that I'm working for that's so important that if I don't get this completed, it almost doesn't make any difference whether I made the fallout shelter in the first place. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. Our fallout shelter is done, but that doesn't mean we're done. We're moving on to the next major, very important project that was always waiting in the wings as soon as we could get this secured. This thing protects us for the first couple of weeks after a nuclear strike. And what we're gonna be talking about in this video is everything that happens after that. And that is not something to just forget about or ignore. I know when a lot of people think about nuclear survival skills, they're thinking about, you know, that first couple of hours, first couple of days, first couple of weeks. Uh, I'm hoping that my life lasts longer than a couple of hours or a couple of days or a couple of weeks. So the next thing that we're going to be working on is, you know, what do we need to do to get ready for that time period after a couple of weeks when we've emerged from our fallout shelter and, you know, we're scratching our heads and thinking, well, what's next? Well, what's next is probably we're going to want to be eating some food and living our lives. And this greenhouse right here and the corresponding greenhouse on the other side, the house is totally symmetrical in that way. I'm kind of a slave to, sli to symmetry. Uh, these are the next projects that we're gonna be working on right now. Uh, why are we working on the, the greenhouses? Well, we're gonna come around kind of the front of the house here, past the chickens that are, they're always screaming when I'm doing a video because they're listening to me. Uh, and they think that that means, hey, uh, you know, Praxis is talking, that means it's time for us to talk too. They actually don't scream nonstop. I mean, certainly in the morning, they do some crowing and that was a bit of a challenge for me at the beginning. But, uh, you know, they don't scream all the time. Just, just when I'm doing videos, huh? How about that? All right, so what we're looking at right over here, we've got, our two main garden areas, and it's a little bit difficult to see them, I suppose, underneath the snow. But there's a large rectangular garden here, and then on the other side, there's a smaller triangular garden right over there. Now, these are, I'm sure, smaller than many people's gardens. They're probably larger than most people's gardens. Most people don't even have a garden. Um, but one thing uh, that is not uh, comparative with these gardens is, uh, you know, are they enough for us to live off of? And the answer is absolutely not. You can't have a family living off of such a small space. And at this point, this is our growing space that we have. Now, if there was some sort of a nuclear event, these uh, gardens are going to get... Um, they're going to get dusted. Now, I mentioned during some of the videos related to uh, building the fallout shelter that one of my uh, to-do items on the, the list of things to do before we head into the shelter is to come out here and throw some plastic tarps down uh, over the garden. And the idea would be to try to keep as much as possible uh, you know, dust and debris from getting into the soil here. I don't think that it would do a perfect job, but having, uh, certainly having a tarp over it uh, is going to make it so there's a, a lower concentration of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, whatever you don't want in your garden, getting down in that garden. Now, uh, that's easier said than done. Uh, I mean, look, we've got all these sticks sticking up out of this garden. This one was used for beans. So, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing just throw down a piece of plastic over something like that. So I don't even know whether that would actually ever happen. But whether it does happen or it doesn't happen, independent of whether we're able to make these green, uh, these green spaces, these growing areas, clean from radioactive fallout, there are two spaces that we definitely can do that on, and that, again, is the greenhouse on this side of the house and the greenhouse on this side of the house. By, by the way, I'm just going to mention, uh, it's kind of tangential, but the reason the ladder is there is because when you put solar panels up on the top of your roof, you know, in a perfect world, I guess that the snow always falls off, but the snow doesn't always fall off. So. I've got that ladder there so I can reach the top with a roof rake and I can, uh, I can clear off all of those uh, solar panels so we can get energy back a little bit sooner after a snowstorm uh, if I don't think that it's going to melt off. It usually does melt off, but it doesn't always. So we're going to head into this greenhouse and the goal, like I said, is to get it so this greenhouse can be used for growing food if we were in a situation where, you know, a significant portion of the world might have been dusted. Now again, the uh, 
governments of the world are probably going to say things like, you know, it's fine. You know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, look at these uh, safety uh, profile sheets and I'm sure they will have changed, uh, you know, what's considered a safe amount of radiation to <laughs> you know, accommodate the new reality. You see that all the time. There's a uh, nuclear power plant here in New England and they have certain, uh, you know, safety sheets about uh, what is a, an appropriate temperature of river water to be moving through uh, the reactor area to try to cool the reactors down. And uh, when climate change, uh, you know, just put it to a point where, you know, we're having hotter and hotter summers, uh, that wasn't really a problem for the nuclear power plants because all they did was just change on the safety sheets what was considered a maximum allowable uh, water uh, temperature to be going into the rea reactors. And they solved the problem of safety just by saying that whatever they were able to achieve was what they considered to be safe. And the same thing will happen with food if we're in a situation where a lot of the world gets dusted with radiation and um, there just won't be an, op an option uh, to uh, you know, to be sourcing food from a safe environment. And the way that the government will deal with that is to just, uh, you know, try to make sure they can convince people that whatever is possible is is safe. And um, I don't fault them for that. Uh, you know, it's better to eat food that is radioactive than to starve to death. Certainly one of those is a uh, short-term problem, one of them is a long-term problem, and if you, you die of starvation, it doesn't really much matter whether you had too much radiation in your diet. But what I would like to do is try to minimize that as much as possible and be in a position where I don't have to pretend that something is safe that isn't safe. So let's head on in and let's see what we have going on in here. Now, uh, what you are going to see inside is what I am presently working on. This is not necessarily the absolute best use of the space, uh, but I wanted to kind of bring you guys up to speed on what I do have going on in here. Uh, first thing you're going to notice right off the bat, and before I start going around, I'm just going to pop the camera off this little tripod I've got here. Uh, I've been using this as kind of like your storage junk area for anything that didn't really have a place. Bird seed in some of these buckets, uh, you know, we're using it to store trash. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of stuff in here, and this is something I'm going to uh, definitely have to be addressing. Uh, you know, there's even some clothing back here. This is like clothing to give away to people. Uh, you have friends that could use some of those winter boots, but we just haven't seen them in a while. So we definitely have to clean up like that. But you see, underneath the cleanup, you see all these rocks down here. There's a row of rocks across there, and in this stretch, there's growing area. There's growing area right through there, and then this entire top area is all is all dirt up there. Now, down here we've got uh, there's a rug, but underneath the rug we have some gravel, and uh, this was never intended to be a growing space. There's an awful lot of headroom in here. You could probably grow a couple small trees in here. And the initial plan is that this top area is going to have, uh, you know, growing space. There's going to be grass, essentially, up here, gravel, grass, whatever. You can see it's all, all dirt through here. So this is going to be kind of like a mini garden. Now, is this going to be enough space to grow food for our entire family? Well, no, certainly not. Uh, even the gardens outside, which are much larger, are not big enough to grow food for our entire family. But if I have to eat 10 apples, and I have the, chance, uh, I have the choice between eating 10 radioactively contaminated apples, or only eight or nine of those, and then I can have one or two clean apples, which one of those is a better health situation? You know, certainly it would be ideal if I could have uh, 10 non-radioactive apples, but especially in the case of radiation, just reducing things is going to put you in a better position than if you didn't reduce things. So what we're looking for is just maximizing the amount of growing space that we have that we can consider clean. Now, if we can get tarps outside, that will make our garden a little bit cleaner. And certainly if we can get this space active and working, this indoor environment has the potential for being entirely clean. I, I mean, you know, entirely, you know, put a little asterisk af after that. Nothing's perfect in this world, but uh, you know, certainly very, very, very clean. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing up here in this area. Now, the area that I uh, showed earlier had gravel. Uh, we certainly could be putting uh, potted plants, like outdoor patio plants, uh, in in that area, but I want to talk just about the kind of this dirt area and what specifically we have going on uh, in here. Now these silver pipes that you see, this is three inch conduit and this conduit comes from inside. Uh, this goes into the downstairs bathroom and the upstairs bathroom to make the plumbing simpler is right above the downstairs bathroom. That's the fan from the, the shower and the uh, upstairs bathroom. Now both of those come down here, they go side by side and they're both going to plunge down into the dirt. Now you can kind of see what's going on with this one here. 
Uh, this one is from the upstairs bathroom. It goes down into the dirt. It does a 90 degree angle under the ground and it comes right up to over there. And then the exhaust blows out the top there. Uh, before we go in any further, I want to just mention what's going on with this wall here. You can see that there is a, a concrete stucco on the side and then there's just some wire lath back here. The reason that I did not uh, put the stucco on that area initially when I did everywhere else is because uh, I'm stupid and I had some kind of a ridiculous idea that I was going to kind of terrace this area and the, the dirt level would be kind of down here and then there'd be like a, you know a pile of rocks and then there'd be like another terrace over here and it was you know uh, to be blunt it was just a stupid idea because you know, all these terraces would just be so narrow you'd take kind of a large functional space and you'd break it up into a bunch of like completely useless spaces so I've got some lath that I just put on there recently uh, and I'm going to be finishing up the stucco on that area. Now it would have been great if I had finished that stucco before I started you know, all this pipe work uh, but there's a reason I haven't done that and that is right over here. We are in a greenhouse and it is about 10 degrees warmer in the greenhouse than it is outside but it's still it's, it's still kind of chilly. It's just under 50 degrees in here and 50 degrees would be an okay temperature for doing the stucco work but I'd like it to be a little bit warmer and especially at night it's going to drop down it could uh, be pretty close to you know freezing point in here in the evening. It almost never actually does freeze but I know that the stucco is going to be stronger if it is put on when it's not like on the edge of freezing. So I'm holding off on that and we'll do that later. The, the top section of this pipe actually can just pull right out. There's a union right down over there. Uh, so what we're uh, getting ready to do here is putting in the second pipe because I can't join both of these because if you're blowing air out of one bathroom and they join it would just kind of like blow up into the other bathroom. So you need them uh, to be separate and the second one's going to come down, go underground and then pop out right up back over here. And you can see the beginnings of that right down over here. This is being constructed for that purpose. Uh, and I just want to uh, detail just a couple of things that I'm going to need to do to this. I'm going to pick it up. All right, so this is upside down at this point. So the air is going to uh, come in here and then around here. And there's going to be a lot of condensation. So what I need to do is drill a couple of holes. One here, one here. Uh, these are half inch holes. Here's the drill that I was using for the other one, half inch diameter holes. And the reason for that is because you don't want all that condensation just pooling in this area. Now uh, the type of uh, drain pipe that I'm using here, uh, this is a uh, triple wall H uh, HDPE uh, drain pipe and this stuff is uh, not the kind of stuff that you would normally bury. Now I am burying it here but I feel okay burying this type of stuff here because there's never going to be a car driving over any of this stuff. There's never going to be heavy machinery over any of this stuff. It's just going to, you know, basic foot traffic and the difference in cost between uh, this stuff here and uh, the Schedule 40 stuff, which is the you know the really uh, beefy stuff that you're able to you know actually bury if you're going to drive a car over it or something like that. Uh, the difference in cost is uh, enormous. I, th I believe these are about one quarter of the cost. Uh, the buying the the full Schedule 40 stuff, I believe at this point, the, the, the price keeps changing, but last I looked it was like about $60 for a 10 foot section and these are about like $15 for a 10 foot section. So it's much, much cheaper and it's uh, it's totally fine for, for the purposes uh, that I have. Uh, one thing that's kind of a uh, interesting kind of, uh, I, I'm going to say it's kind of a downside for it, is that, and, and it can sometimes be an upside, is it's corrugated. It has kind of like a dead airspace in the middle. Uh, in there and that's kind of a nice feature if you wanted to insulate uh, the pipe so that you're not getting as much condensation going on uh, if you know you have warm air blowing through like a kind of a cool area but in my case what the main reason that we are venting the air into here is because we want to transfer the heat from the warm indoor ho house air out into this environment and I'm thinking for winter time. In the summertime we have windows open in here so you're able to you know vent out the excess heat anyway. You can see the really stylish uh, temporary winter shutter that I have over the, those louvered vents up at the top there. That'll definitely be uh, getting swapped out with something else. Um, but that, that's actually kind of a downside, uh, the fact that these are kind of uh, insulated. So anyway, uh, the first step is for me to put this uh, into the ground over there and I'm actually just going to do that right on camera. So I'm, I'm putting two holes on either side here 
Here we go. And it's, this stuff's really easy to drill through too, which is kind of nice. That's not why I chose it, but it's, kinda, it's a nice little feature. So I'm doing them just on either side. And it doesn't need to have a, a ton of, uh, there we go. Yeah, I would have liked if I lined those up just a little bit better. It's about, one of them's about two millimeters uh, too close to center, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, uh, so we're doing one on one side and one on the other side. Uh, just in, the idea is I want this to kind of slope away from uh, where the air goes in. So if any wa water is kind of pooling, it'll kind of uh, drift away. But if uh, there's anything wrong with that slope or for whatever reason, I want to have holes on both sides just so we avoid having any kind of puddling or pooling. Okay, and I'll show you what, I'm, what I've accomplished here in just a moment. There we go. The, the trick is to not... <laughs> It's so easy to drill through this. I, the trick is to avoid drilling all the way through the other side. Okay, here we go. So this is what we've accomplished here. Is we've got a couple of holes here. So any, this is, remember this is upside down. As the air comes through, any condensation that grows on the side is gonna kind of leak down here and there's, a, you know, there's ample places for it to uh, escape. So I'm gonna bring this over and we'll see if it fits into the, uh, the hole I've created right here for it. Right. So one issue with having like a hernia, I have a hernia in my lower abdomen and you can't like stretch the way that you kind of used to be able to. I mean I can stretch but I just know not to because I know I'm going to rip something. Okay, here we go. Just got to baby your body. Okay, so I'll bring the camera over and you can see how that kind of all lays in. I put a lot of thought into where these tubes come out in the back. Uh, and I understand one's really tall, one's really short. I, I, I'm going to put like brick around it or stone piles so that as the hot air comes out it'll kind of like steam out of these like stone piles. Uh, so they're, they're not finished. At this, at this point I just want to get them buried and in. Alright, so you can see how this one comes in here and I just have to connect uh, the rest of that pipe there. I, I have that pipe all ready to go. and. And then it comes out over to here. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the warmth from inside the house. It's going to put it down into the earth. It's going to take the excess humidity from inside the house. It's going to put it down into the earth. So we're taking something that is a problem. It's a waste product. And we are turning it into something useful and valuable. And over the next several months, my plan is to start changing all of this from this ridiculous pile of mess that you're seeing right here into a truly functional space. And I think that there is a lot of growing space that we have here. Just looking at the dirt section itself, uh, you know, the width of this area, I'm going to say is probably about 12 feet. And I know that this dimension this way is about 14 feet. So it's 14 times 12. You know, you can do the math in your head. I, I, I can't do it while I narrate at the same time. Uh, on top of that, we've got this growing area here, which is like a two foot um, wide section that goes, uh, I'm going to say, yeah, again, it's probably like 12 feet long. So two feet by 12 feet. I can do that in my head. That's 24 square feet of gardening space. And then we've got all this kind of vertical space. You know, all this area here, uh, we are going to be putting wooden decking down over there. Uh, so eventually uh, we'll be able to you know, place uh, you know, outdoor growing bins and things like that uh, over there. And you know, we're going to have lots of space there. And just going to swing around back this way. Get, get one last shot of all this, this mess. All this vertical space here. These walls are going to be able to be used as growing space. I'm thinking we're going to be putting lath, uh, or uh, not, not lath, um, lattice. Maybe wooden lattice or some kind of scaffold across the, uh, the wall here. And we'll be able to use that for uh, you know, hanging vines. Uh, you know, the vines can use the dirt from the ground, but then go up, up, up and take advantage of the sun because it's a lot, you can just see it in here. It's more shadowy in here and we got a lot more sun up here. And we're going to have an awful lot of real estate. Uh, one thing I'm planning on doing is to cover up these metal pipes. I'm going to be grabbing some uh, metal mesh and make kind of a cage that goes all the way up there and we'll grow some kind of a vine. I'm thinking, you know, this is not a food crop, you know, you can sue me, uh, but wisteria. I think wisteria is a really beautiful vine. It's got these purple flowers on it. And I think it would be really beautiful to have a wisteria vine kind of covering that whole area and then feathering out across the top 
all up over there. So we've got big plans for this space. And this is a really important project in terms of that, you know, after the first couple of weeks, you know, we have the, the fallout shelter to support us and keep us safe for a couple of weeks. And then after that time, it's important to think about that. And this is one of those ways that we're thinking about that. Now, we have our pantry. We'll be able to eat out of our pantry. We'll have access to our garden if we feel that the garden's clean enough. We'll have access to the polluted food that we can get at the grocery store. But this is a way of augmenting our diet with food that is as clean, you know, as you can possibly, uh, you know, achieve in that kind of horrible world that I'm still hoping never manifests. But at the at this moment in time, seeing the uh, the different parties and the different interests, uh, you know, that have stakes in what's going on. It's hard to imagine any of the parties backing down uh, because they kind of don't have any reason to other than, you know, wanting to preserve the earth for their, their children and their grandchildren. But I think we've seen so far with the way that humans have been behaving over the past several decades that an interest in preserving the earth for their offspring doesn't seem to be an incredibly strong driving factor for people's decision making. So, so we build greenhouses and we prepare for people to act the way people have acted in the past, going on into the future, unfortunately. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm excited about this project and I hope you join me to see how this develops over time. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, I know that you're going to love this video series. It is a playlist that covers every single day, day by day, the construction of our entire house, including the greenhouses on the side. So if you're interested in maybe doing this for yourself, you can see what it's like day by day by day, nail by nail by nail, board by board by board, how to achieve this for yourself.